Trantolo and Trantolo, personal injury law firm for over 85 years. Keith and Scott, third generation Trantolos getting it done here in Connecticut. And then they were like, hey, let's go to Long Island and take up some more office space. So they got Riverhead now in Melville, New York to get a hold of these great Trantolo people and all their other lawyers. Save time, dial 9-844-999-9999. Will Friday's game between Iowa and UConn be the biggest women's sporting event in the history of the United States? <laughs> Man, I've been trying to write them down. I just top of my head thinking about it. Like for the U.S. women's soccer team and the fever that was really the last 12 years and counting, that's kind of global. Um, I do think that women around the country were locked into that, yeah. regardless if they were soccer fans or not. But I'm still, listen, man, I'm, I do a lot of these uh, unofficial surveys, and my unofficial survey says not a lot of guys were going out to those women's soccer watch parties like I saw last night for the the Elite Eight games. Uh, I was thinking maybe Serena when she... Again, that's global. I mean, yeah. if, you're, if you're talking tennis, golf, uh Soccer is global that you can't compete with those numbers because they're in the golf. billions. The women, the women's world cup, well, I think was two and a half. I looked at it, it was two and a half billion. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying it was the U S versus anybody. That's, that's what the finals are. The men's three and a half billion. Um, so that's global and stuff. But I, I do think for right now, it will be one of the, the biggest sporting events. And, and so will the, the, uh, South Carolina matchup as well with NC state. I, I think that right now people are really tuned in, to women's sports. Now we'll be at the greatest of all time. No, because I think next year will be bigger. I think depending on, you know, who's in it. Um, but I, I think that, listen, I, I think it's unfortunate that Caitlin Clark's leaving. If she could come back another year, Angel Reese leaving. I, if you could come back another year, I would do it on the college level. The WNBA cannot compete with the women's college basketball numbers right now. It is number one in this country. Well, this is not including the games last night because I did hear that that number was approaching 10 million in, in viewership for last night's games. And last year's national final was 9.9 million. 9.92, sir, which ranks third all time for women's basketball ratings. That is third all time. Now, you are correct in, in stating that probably Fridays will beat that number and whatever comes up in 2025 will probably beat Friday's right. number. However, when you look at the history of viewership in women's basketball, that game last year, national championship third all time behind 1986 Texas beats USC, Cheryl Miller's final game for USC. Totally different ratings. You had three networks back then, and you, you could go back to the, the 85 CBS. World Series had one of the highest rated uh, World Series ever. I, I think that's a little bit different. Plus, the 9.9, I think, is low because I think people are watching it on phones. They're streaming it on their their mm. um, you know iPads, laptops. That's how my 13-year-old watches things. She's watching Netflix on her laptop. I don't know if you're getting ratings the same way if you're sitting there in front of a TV set. So I, I, I think that that's probably a little bit low. But no, I think as far as attention-wise right now, I think people are absolutely gaga for women's basketball. And I do think that the star power of the 9 o'clock semifinal game with Caitlin Page, I throw Aaliyah in there, yeah. and a couple of those other players from Iowa, man. I know they got a big following in the Midwest. Um, the number one game has those elements as well. 1983, sir. 1983, Louisiana Tech took on USC. Kim yeah, Mulkey, Kim Mulkey versus, versus Cheryl Miller. Cheryl Miller, you are correct. That is the yeah. number one highest viewed, and you are also correct. That was a CBS game um, in a world where there's only three channels. Like as far as recency, UConn defeating Tennessee, uh, Stanford, Virginia back in '92. The UConn defeating Tennessee was '95. So a lot of these rating numbers, you're right. They're back in the day when you only had a few options, and there was probably only one women's basketball. They didn't show regular season women's no. basketball like they do today either. Um, but and you didn't have the SEC network or the ACC network, Big Ten network. You didn't have those networks that that were devoted to their basketball. I mean, as far as I, I, honestly, you got to give them a little bit of love. Volleyball, Nebraska's volleyball this year, ninety-two thousand. It's a world's record. I know in the stadium, it's, it's in insane. the football stadium, it's insane. So the more you do those kind of things, and and, and honestly, the Frozen Four, uh, women's and men's hockey should start getting to more of these stadiums and and different things 
uh, like the NHL is doing right now, I think it, it generates more because it's also unique. It's it's a the uniqueness of, of volleyball at a football stadium where you could put a hundred thousand people. That's why I think it thrills these people to be a part of that part I, of history. I do have to give you a, a nod to Mr. Dibble. You are right about something in women's basketball, and I found out I was wrong. You were right last night in women's basketball, and I found out that uh, Jason Sudeikis likes every women's basketball team. He is not a UConn fan. No. He was no. at the Iowa game rooting for Caitlin and Clark. And Larry David all of a sudden. was ye- yelling at Dan Hurley. I mean, these guys, these guys are again. They they want the spotlight put on fair them. weather. It's yeah, fair weather action. And dude, he was at a Kansas game. Was yeah. re- rooting against UConn. Uh huh. Um, he was he was in stores. I know. He's hanging um, out with Jonathan Fourteen. That's our dog. That's our dog. Should have pissed on his leg. <laughs> he may have. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I meant to say bite. It just came out. Because <laughs> I don't care for that kind of crap. Well, 14's I mean, not a biter anyway. For, he's, he's a lover. He's, he's, a, he's lover. a snuggler. <laughs> he has, you know, he's a little old, so he has some bowel problems every now and then. Stuff happens. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, dude. I mean... You're taking it to another Ted Lasso. I could care less. I'm honestly. glad he's yeah. showing a shine on it, but I thought he was a UConn fan and uh, nope. proved me wrong last no. night when no. he was rooting Caitlin. No, Clark. he is wherever I can get my face plastered. I do I'm like seeing the uh, the the older women with the "I'm feeling 22" shirts. I think that's cool, man. It's great for young women. And the Paige jerseys I saw, Leah Edwards jerseys I saw yeah. in Portland. There's so many girls my daughter goes to school with that they have full pages devoted to Paige Beckers. Are we still doing yes. the Paige braids up They front? are at school, Paige yeah. Braids. They do it for their lacrosse team. Nice. So, By the way, my daughter's number in lacrosse, 24. She's now got to study who Kobe Bryant is. Has no idea. Oh, my gosh. Coco! So, pulled a good number, though. So random. All right, we'll be right back with who we had.